Oi, oi, and welcome to the Orient Outlook podcast, sponsored by Carol Angley Flores, with myself, Steve Nussbaum. And as always, I'm joined by my good friend, my South Stand chum, the bearded legend, the one and only, the daddy It's Mr. Paul Levy. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is episode number 352. And as always, thanks to everyone who tuned into our last show, which, as we uh, figured out just before we start recording, was actually three weeks ago, because obviously we had Exeter postponed. Uh, We didn't record uh, last weekend, which was Easter weekend. Um, So here we are today, three weeks later. Thanks very much to everyone who messaged us. We are pleased that we are going to be filling the void that has been for the last (laughs) two or three weeks. Um, We've got a bit of a bumper show this week, obviously. Um, Only three games, but nonetheless, there's still those three which will quickly uh, go over and news from the last, obviously, two or three weeks as well. Quite a fair bit's been going on, so we'll just bring you up to speed in case you've missed anything from there as well but as always we start our shows with a word from our very very brilliant sponsors we certainly do and they are Carol Langley Florist who hopefully you know are based in Chingford and have served the borough of Waltham Forest and the surrounding area for over the last 70 years they've got a fantastic team there they can do anything for you from bespoke wedding events family funeral tributes birthdays anniversaries bar mitzvahs bat mitzvahs you name it they'll do it for you and it gets better they offer 15% off to all those fans and staff which could give you a huge saving on any flower requirements that you have. So you can get in touch with John in the same various ways. You can give him a call on the telephone on 0208 529 4130. You can look the guys up online by visiting their website, which can be found at www.carolangley.co.uk. Or you can find the guys on social media. They're on all the major platforms. You can find them on Instagram under Carol Langley Florists. You can find them on Twitter at Carol Langley E4. Or you can find the team on Facebook at Carol Langley Florists. Yeah, indeed you can. So let's move on then to the Supporters Club. There's just one update at the moment to tell you about. We're off to Derby County on the 13th of April. Uh, There's a three o'clock kickoff. Coaches will leave the Supporters Club at half past nine. Adult cost for this is £33. Concessions are £30 and children are £17. There's a £3 surcharge if you're not a member. Obviously do bear in mind that the trains are not cheap and they are unreliable at the moment. So this could be the safest and best option for you to get there and back. And remember those prices don't include your match day ticket and all children uh, must be travelling with an adult so to book for that trip or uh, Shrewsbury uh, which is the last game of the season you can go into the supporters club on a match day or you can call the travel line that's 07507 539 579 I'm sure you know it by now we've said it every week this season Um, it's not changed it's still the same number yeah and Starman Awards three weeks this evening will be parting at the Prince Region I believe the tickets are still available for the sum of £75. So I'll be there. Come and say hello if you're there. Be a great night celebrating the season that was at LOFC. So two pieces of AOB, Mr Levy. The first piece, a very sad piece of news. We, we were sad to hear the passing of former player Peter Bennett. He played uh, for the O's from 1970 to 1979. Made over 200 appearances for the club. I was part of the side that reached the 1978 FA Cup semi-final. So we send our condolences to Peter's family and friends. And last piece uh, of AOB this week, I obviously uh, worked for HMV. I think quite a lot of people know that. I was uh, quite pleasantly surprised to get an email from the manager of HMV Wigan, a guy called uh, Tara. So thanks for the email, Tara. He asked me to give a shout out to his friend and massive O's fan, James Patterson, who uh, I've heard likes to listen to the podcast when running and will be listening to this very podcast when running the London Marathon. So, uh, James, I don't know how far you got to go uh, as you're listening to this, but I hope the marathon is going well for you and I hope we have brightened up your marathon experience. All right, three weeks to cover. That's a lot of action to pick up on. We're going to start a happy Monday, 18th of March, quite late at the club. With no news to report, as everyone was getting over our Jordan Graham interview, which feels like ages ago, but that was the last episode that we done. So again, massive thank you to Jordan and the club for sorting that out. Jordan seems to be heading back to fitness. Lots of good videos uh, on his social media accounts, and an absolute pleasure to speak to him. That'd be great to have him back next season. Yeah, won't it, Justin? It'd be like a brand new signing as well. 
um, to be fair. And it was also like we follow him on socials. So it was um, good to see he's back in the UK, back recovering and seems to be doing pretty well, which is always nice to see. Uh, to Huey Tuesday, then the 19th of March, as we move forwards in the afternoon, an Orient 11 made up of mostly first team and youth players took on a South End 11 at Brisbane Road. The sides for this, or the team that, that started this game, Sam Howes was in goal, Jaden Sweeney, Jack Simpson, um, Harrison Soje, St. Louis, uh, St. Louis uh, Welch, Brown, Obiero, I won't profess to know all the youth team yeah. first names, Obiero, Adua J, Edwards, and young Charlie Pe- Pegram started that with some obvious substitutions throughout the game. Pleased to say the O's did win this match 3-2, thanks to goals from Mackay Welsh, Dan Adua J, and also a name that's been cropping up uh, in our plans uh, for the last few weeks is Dan Carter. Yeah, so... We had a, a DM from a very old West Stand chum, a guy called Adam Willis, who used to sit in front of us with his dad. This is like early 90s, mid 90s, really yeah. nice guy, really nice family. And it turns out that Dan Carter is the nephew of our friend Adam Willis. So Dan Carter is an actual O by blood, which is great to hear. So he hasn't only got a cool name, he's got a cool family as well, and yeah. he scored in that game. So always great to hear. So look forward yeah. to what the future holds uh, for young Dan Carter. Thanks for your message, Adam. I've not heard from Adam in about 25, 30 years since I used to see him in the West End. Amazing, isn't it? So what, what the podcast can do. Amazing. But also, um, it was good. Um, Jason Dimitri came back with South End as well. So another XO through the academy. Uh, coming back unfortunately, well, fortunately for him he wasn't on the winning side ha, uh, it's Wednesday 20th of March <laughs> uh, massive congratulations to you. another young oak Charlie Pegram who signed his first pro contract with the O's on this day he signed a two and a half year deal so say a massive well done to Charlie a name I'm sure we'll hear much more of it in the upcoming season or two hopefully yeah I'd like to see him get uh, some minutes in the last mm. few games of the season to be honest I think that would be great also on Wednesday the EFL confirmed that our final day fixture against Shrewsbury Town on Saturday the 27th of April that's now kicking off at half past 12 so if you've already booked your train tickets you need to change the uh, to change the going out time um, and maybe even the coming home time um, because that is now 12.30 kickoff. It isn't uncommon, I think, if I remember rightly, for as long as I can remember, all the last game of the seasons finished, at, oh, sorry, started at half past 12. Yeah, they do mess about with the fixtures, the good old EFL. All right, Thursday, the 21st of March, a day Royal Satoya will always remember as he made his full international debut. He came on as a sub in the 62nd minute in Cyprus's one all home draw against Latvia. So a full blown, full-fledged international. Well done, Mr. Satiriu. Indeed, absolutely. Also in that side was young Hector Kiprianu. Um, I don't know if he was making his his debut or not. Anyway, Friday the 22nd of March, the club announced that young O, Harrison Soji and Rhys Byrne had joined National League side Dartford FC. That's on loan until the end of this season. So there's the last few games of their league as well. So good luck to both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Keep a close eye, see how they get on. So, OK, Saturday... The 23rd of March, the senior team weren't in action, so they were supposed to be playing Exeter City, like Paul mentioned at the beginning of the pod. That obviously got postponed, hence no podcast that week. But the young O's were in action. They hosted Plymouth Argyle at Buckhurst Hill, and it was the O's who took the lead in the 12 minutes. Divine Samuel opened the scoring as we went in 1-0 up at half-time. Plymouth equalised in the 65th minute, but the O's, who on a great run of form, won the game 2-1, thanks to another goal from Divine Samuel in the 86th minute. Has he got a brace? The O's ran out one is. Well done, young O's. What Absolutely. a fantastic little run they have been on. Yeah, indeed they have. And long may that continue. Sunday yeah. the 24th of March now. Uh, the, um, 24th of March now as we move on. Leighton Orient ladies travelled to North West London to start their last six Premier League games. Which if they did win them all, that would pretty much guarantee them the title and a promotion out of that league. Opponents for this one were Headstone Manor Women's FC who had already got the bragging rights over the O's, having won 2-1 at Buckhurst Hill back in September. Uh, and the pitch in Harrow was described as very heavy, which is obviously not good match for the Orient ladies' passing and possession-based strategy game. All right, let's talk about the first half. Then. It was evenly matched after both sides were unable to make the breakthrough, so the game went in goalless at half-time. But things are good for the ladies in red. Just after the restart with Liliana Almedia found a net, but home side on the back foot. Chances came and went both ends, but it was the home star, Amy Shaw, who was well-placed to convert a rebound in the 73rd minute to level things up, yeah. make it one all. 
Indeed, Headstone were now piling on the pressure. Reds keeper Lola Duriei rushed out to save at the feet of an onrushing Stones forward. It looked like being a key moment as she kept the O's in the game with the clock ticking. However, it was Blues' Amy Shaw again who made the difference by hitting two more goals in the final minutes. Her hat-trick was just um, too much for the plucky Orient ladies and that result now means that the O's are unlikely to challenge the top clubs unless they slip up themselves bit of a mountain for them to climb now so thanks to the LOFC ladies for sending that report into us much appreciated yeah, absolutely great to report more to come on the ladies uh, later on in the episode All right Monday the 25th of March I turned 44 thanks uh, to everyone for, for their birth that feels like ages ago that feels like so long ago thanks to everyone uh, for their well wishes it's always nice to get lots of messages from everyone in the Orient community especially people I've not met before uh, which is always yeah. appreciated thanks to everyone and as well as my birthday, it was a big day in the clubs. They announced season card prices for the 24-25 season. Important date for your diaries and an early one. Don't get caught out. Friday the 3rd of May is the deadline to renew your seat by. There's also a waiting list deadline, which I think is even earlier than that. So I don't think the club are going to extend the Friday 3rd of May deadline. I don't remember they extended last year's deadline. Maybe yeah. twice, even if I remember yeah. rightly. They're not going to extend it by the looks of it. So... Don't get caught out Friday the 3rd of May. It's not actually that long a wait. It's about right. three or four weeks on Friday. So make sure you renew your season tickets and don't get caught out because I think if you lose it, it's going to be awfully hard to get it back, judged by what the club are, club are putting out there at the moment. Yeah, it's four weeks. Friday just gone. Yeah. So luck. you have less than four weeks. So payday April will be a good one. Uh, right, Ruel was an unused sub in Cyprus's 1-0 loss against Serbia on, on Monday the 25th of March. That was obviously international week, so let's move on. Yeah, alright, Thursday the 26th of March. Not only my birthday the day before, but the day after. Happy birthday to O's manager, Super Richie Wellens, who also turned 44. I can't believe I'm a day older than Super Richie Wellens. Richie, hope you had a good one. Hope you had a lovely day. Yeah, indeed. Wednesday the 27th of March, more birthday action <laughs> as it was a happy birthday to Orient fan Lottie who turned a grand wow. ripe age of 90. Congratulations, Lottie. I don't even know if you if you listen or if you, if you do or not, but congratulations. We hope you had the most brilliant of days. Absolutely. The big 9-0. All right, Thursday the 28th of March, the club announced that young O Ethan Wright had joined National League Northside Banbury United. He's gone there on a 28-day loan, which we'll see him there until the end of their season. So as always, I wish Ethan all the best of luck. It's good to see some young O's getting out and about, getting some good experience, good first-team football, and again, hopefully kick on next season. Indeedy. So, good Friday, the 29th of March. The table-topping young O's were in action against home at, sorry, at home against Premier League outfit Luton Town. And the Young O's took the lead in the 20th minute thanks to a well-worked move. Mohamed drove in from the left. His first attempt was saved. Dan Carter drilled in the rebound into the roof of the net to make it 1-0 to the O's. Yeah, again, Dan Carter again. Six minutes into the second half, Devine Sangle doubled our lead as he was found on the edge of the box, got onto his stronger foot, let fly into the top right-hand corner, 2-0. The O's weren't done. In the 80th minute, Aaron Sterling added a third after the ball was recovered high up the pitch. And he finished well, 3-0. What, yeah. else can, what else can happen in this one? Well, Al Sadi added a fourth in the 84th minute after good footwork saw him weave around the Luton box and he placed his effort into the far left corner, thankfully with the help of the post. Yeah, fifth and final goal came in the 89th minute, thanks to Chinedu, as the match finished. Orient 5, Luton Town 0. Premier League Luton Town, that is crazy. Well yeah. done to the table-topping young O's. On a wonderful result there. Well done. Amazing result. Love it really is. It. Absolutely. So the main event of the day was Lincoln City. And that's an away, that was away, obviously. Before the game, we, we ran our usual Twitter poll to see how you think we'd get on in this one. And after 311 votes, you voted as follows. 29% of you said that we'd lose this. 30% thought we'd draw. But a whopping 41% yeah. thought we'd win. So thanks to everyone who took a moment to cast your vote. All right. So at 2 o'clock on Good Friday, the team was announced with sole winning goal with Tom James, Omar Beckles, uh, Brandon, Brandon Cooper. I was about to say Bradley Cooper. I got fast <laughs> there for a second. Not the Hollywood guy. No, absolutely. That's and Rob Hunt at the back. <laughs> In midfield, we had Darren Pratley, Idris El Mazzuni, and Jordan Brown with Sanders, Ford, and Satu making up the 11. And on the bench, we had Howes, <coughs> Sweeney, Galbraith, Moncur, O'Neill, Aduadje, 
and Joe Piggott. Yeah, that meant it was one change to the O starting lineup from the team that beat Stevenage as in came Jordan Brown with former Orient Loney Alex Mitchell starting on loan for the hosts. Just that be a legend day. What were your views when you saw that team announced to Yeah, o'clock? I mean, pretty much as as expected. I I thought Galbraith might go straight back in, but I'm pleased Rob Hunt gets a starting spot. I think he's deserved it, and I suspect Idris will be slightly further forward for this one. So it'd be interesting to see. Thought it was a decent lineup though. Good bench. Yeah. All right. Lots of views uh, when that team is announced. Going to mention a few that come in. Alan Reeves too. So whatever happened to Jack Simpson after we signed him? Have I missed something? So I guess at this point, pre. Um, important to say he had two more games left of his suspension we're also going to talk about Jack Simpson uh, in yeah, a little while yeah it was that game and the Peterborough game because obviously he was available yesterday yeah I thought it was quite relevant though because obviously we signed him and he completely gone off the radar even though we knew he was suspended it was a good reminder that we obviously had him waiting to come back in the wings indeed Matthew 81402115 said Galbraith at full back instead of TJ or Hunt personally the boys magic yeah LFC 1971 so keep it tight until mid second half then bring on the subs to push and win the game. Simple. Yeah, if only football was that simple. Ha. The first match between the two sides at Sinsil Bank for 18 years kicked off with both teams still harbouring playoff ambitions with the O's having the, the task of going up against their in-form hosts. Yeah, so Lincoln on very, very strong form coming in to this one. We're going to yeah. cover this one fairly briefly because it feels like ages ago, even though it was only nine days ago, really. Yeah. All right, the O's had an early chance here as a Tom James on throw found its way to Dan Pratley who strike was tipped over the bar by Jensen. Yeah, maybe Prattley should have done a bit better there. I might be being a bit harsh, but I thought maybe he could have possibly done a little bit better there. But anyway, Ruel had a chance in the 13th minute, but Alex Mitchell did well to deny him. All right, well... I uh, do like Alex Mitchell. I would definitely have Alex Mitchell back. He's okay. done very well for Lincoln, so he's proven now at League One. I, I would be very pleased to have Alex Mitchell back at Orient. Just I might be in a minority there, but I'm throwing it out there. All right. I mean, I'm not. I obviously didn't watch the Lincoln match, and I haven't seen anything that's what he's done. But not a bad point. There. He's in a in a side that's that's literally pushing for the playoffs, yeah. and they. I don't know that they're that bigger club that would do well in the championship. It'd be a bit like Luton going in the Premier League. Yeah. They'd be, it'd be like that for them. Fair point. All right, Royal was a busy boy in this one. He had enough effort on target around the half hour mark. Two minutes later, Shaq Ford. Had an effort, sent it straight at Jensen. Yeah, chance for Lincoln in the 42nd minute. Taylor got in behind the defence following a smart free kick, but he fired his effort well wide of the near post. Yeah, good little free kick there. Um, bit lucky here, Taylor fluffed his lines there, because he hasn't been fluffing his lines in no. most of their games, from what I can good see. Good let off. All right, one minute of additional time played out. In this one, no further talking points <coughs> as Revery brought the half to a close with the game goalless. Yeah, absolutely. Nil nil at half time. Attendance for this was 9,922. 920 of those were Leighton Orient fans. Well, on played. Friday. Difficult Fantastic. journey as well with the difficulties trains. on the trains from what yeah. I understand. All right, no changes at half time for the O's. We'll skip to the 55th minute as Max Sanders picked up a book in for a late challenge on Rome. Yeah, double sub on the hour mark as George Moncur and Ollie O'Neill came on to replace Max Sanders and Shaq Ford. Two good subs to bring on, to be fair. So yeah. the strength of the best. And the 66 minute, a chance for Lincoln as Taylor's cross just missed Hackett at the far post. And two minutes later, Jordan Brown took one for the team as he was booked after he brought down the aforementioned Hackett. He certainly was. And uh, slightly after five minutes, after that, Ross Toe also picked up a book in. This time for a foul on Rowan as well. Yeah, big chance came for us in the 74th minute after Ollie O'Neill headed over from an excellent Tom James cross that came in from the right. Yeah, good header, good cross. Unlucky there not to go in. All right, 15 minutes left. Draper rolled Omar Beckles before cutting an effort into the arms of Sol Brin. Yeah, 77th minute. Then third change for the O's as Joe Piggott came on to replace Darren Darren Prattley. Yeah, all right. We're going to skip now to the 84th minute into the end of the game now. More changes for the O's. Idris Amazuni picked up an injury. He couldn't continue, so he was replaced by Ethan Galbray from Ross Tuyu on a booking that was substituted. He came off for Dan Adu Ajay. Yeah, we tried our luck through Ethan Galbraith and Rob Hunt, but Jensen was equal to both their efforts a couple of minutes later. Yeah, good effort there from Galbraith that I saw on the highlights well saved by Jensen. However... It was heartbreak for the O's in the 90th minute as Jovan Makama closed down Jordan Brown on our byline after Omar Beckles had ushered the ball away. Brown's clearance hit and fell kindly to Makama who drove into our box and fired past Sol Brin into the far corner right at the death to make it 1-0 to the hosts. Yeah, poor goal to concede. I think that's a pretty common thought process amongst us Orient fans. We all switched off. 
I think we do deserve the point from that game. Um, but I mean, arguably, the recovery in the second phase of that, should we not be doing better? Could Sol Grin have potentially got to that and, and, and actually saved that? Could Omar Beckles stuck a foot out and that, like all if buts and maybes, it didn't happen? But it, what I'm trying to say is, it, I think it was preventable. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that goal was in five minutes of additional time were played. No further talking points if we brought the match to a close as the O's slipped. But now a defeat, meaning their faint play of hopes now surely gone as Lincoln City moved into sixth place and he won to take the final playoff spot. So Richie Wellens obviously he's done the rounds with his interviews. That's what been on social media now for the last week and a half. We're obviously not going to play it. If anyone wants to go back and have a listen, they can do that and find it on YouTube and obviously on the club website as well. Yep, so the league table after that, that defeat means that we end the month in 10th place. We've now played 40 games at this point, won 16 of them, drawn 10 and we'd lost 14 of them. We've got a goal difference of minus one and we've picked up 58 points. Your views on that game? I, originally, this podcast was supposed to go out on Monday and I wasn't supposed to be doing it, so I paid very little attention to this game. So my <laughs> notes are tiny. My notes were literally, there's a lesson there for every footballer. You've got to be on it for the whole 90 minutes. Doesn't matter about what you do for the 89 if you're going to switch off on the 90. Yeah, uh, so true. Other than that, <laughs> Lincoln on the crest of a wave. But we should have taken something from that. Should have taken, yeah. And that was my thoughts on it. I didn't really follow the game. And when I saw it going in the last minute, my kind of heart sunk a little bit. Mm. But, you know, when your luck is on your side, which is what Lincoln are having at the moment, it's on your side when it's not, it's not. But not a terrible result considering they were battering teams 6 0, 4 0, 5 0 in the run up to that. To get beat by a last minute goal, arguably, when we've probably had the better chances in the game. Another day we're sitting here talking about three points. Yeah, and or at least a point. So, yeah. yeah, very brief views from me on that one. What about you? Yeah, I mean, look, one terrible mistake late in the game has cost us, and I can't think why we didn't deal with that situation sooner. Um, we've lacked an edge in the final third all, all season as well. And so that's two games now we've got nothing from, um, even though we deserved at least three or four points. So basically the point I'm trying to make here is that we've played Lincoln, well, obviously we played them three times, but yeah. um, you know what counts is, is two games we've got nothing from them. Um, I'm also gutted that we've now lost Idris for the season, because that means, does that mean yeah. he'll, he'll return to it for treatment or are they happy for us to treat him? Because obviously he's their player. Look, we're in 10th place with a severely depleted, depleted squad. So I think... You know, the overall thing is the bigger picture is it's a massive achievement to be where we're at given the the losses that we've had this season in terms of personnel. So yeah, not too downbeat about this. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point about Idris because nothing's really come out of the club about Idris. Richie's obviously mentioned it in one post match, I think. Yeah. And he's, there's not been anything else said by the club. Yeah. Which is um, quite surprised about actually because obviously season's got three or four weeks left. Yeah. Richie said he's out for four months. Not being the strongest of mathematicians, but being capable enough tells me that Idris Amazuni isn't playing for later on it again in this season, and his loan is done. So I'd be interested to see what happens now um, with Idris. Because obviously, he's out for four months. That's August. April, mate. He's not going to get a pre-season, which might work in Orient's favour because it might potentially put clubs off of him because he might not be getting a pre-season. So that might yeah. be a a strange blessing in disguise for Orient because it might put off a few more attractive suitors shall we say so yep. be interesting to see what happens with Idris there. if he does go out um, that way it'd be a shame to see him obviously bow out that way I dare we'll say he'll probably come I mean pre-season starts end of June early July I dare say I mean it's a month out so I dare say that he'll probably be involved in pre-season probably the latter half of it um, again not knowing what his problem is not knowing yeah, how well, long it, it takes but I, you know if it's four months he did it at the end of March so you, arguably he might be fit, but I th- to your point, yeah, I, th- I think that might put off a few suits who definitely would want to get their business sorted yes. sooner rather than later. Um, and obviously, he's got another year left at Ipswich. Well, you know, if if they get into the Premier League, he's definitely not going to be called into their squad then, so he'll be surplus to requirement. With a hundred and twenty odd million pound payment, can they just afford to just keep him in the squad and loan him out to a champ side? Possibly. I mean, I don't. I... Or a top, you know, a big like a Charlton, for example, you know. Bit a bigger club that will pay all of his wages. Yeah, it'd be interesting what happens with Idris yeah. Elmazoo. And obviously, we'll be keeping a very close eye on that as it happens. We certainly will. All right, those were our views. Lots of your views come in at full time. We're going to mention a few just because we read them does not mean we agree with them. Doyle underscore Hooper said, Sickener, 
one team came to win the game and the other got all three points. Scrappy game with not much in it. A shame that an error has cost us. Yeah, indeed. Wrecker blew out. So I thought the first half we were poor in defence, but we had good chances. I felt like we were the better team in the second half, but a bit of slack clearing of the ball cost us in the end. I think TJ had a bit of a mare. The ref was awful as well, and it's a shame to have lost both like that to them this yeah, year. Obviously, two very late goals, like you said, getting them six points. And us none. A PM of 3190. So I've seen them three times this season, and they've taken six points and haven't hardly done anything to deserve them. Indeed. Timothy James, CL2, said, No disgrace at all, considering how successful Lincoln have been recently and how many goals they've put past the last three sides they've put to the sword. Fair point. Yeah, it was a fair point. As I say, we kept them at bay until 90 minutes and it was yeah. only a mistake really. It's let they Conway. turned over teams. They haven't just beaten yeah. them like one nil. They've turned yeah. them over. Yeah, they didn't turn us over Pulled at their at hands all. down massively. <laughs> Conway underscore Nigel said, Oh well, very positive season, which we would have gladly accepted last August but the obvious lack of firepower has cost us in the end we just keep having poor transfer windows though and I hope the club's ambition going forward matches riches that is a good point I think had we been sitting here in this very or in Outlook podcast towers in August or September and someone went actually by the mid early April you're going to be 10th very comfortably you would have gone all right, right. Governor. Yeah, take I'll that snap bet. your hand off. Yeah. However, it feels like it has been a bit of a wasted opportunity, which is why some people are seeing it as a bit half empty. Yeah. Which is a bit bonkers, really. Yeah. But, but I do, I do see it now a bit more clearly that it is a bit of a not yeah. wasted opportunity, but Missed. I think Richie's frustrations now are starting to boil over a little bit. Definitely noticed a change in his post-match interviews that I guess I'll cover when we talk about Peterborough and yesterday, where I think he's kind of getting a bit more not agitated, but he's a bit more. Not negative, but like it is what it is. Like it is what it is. Like we didn't have a great January transfer window. Potentially, it's cost us yeah, an opportunity definitely. of going into the playoffs. Definitely. Whether the players that we would have signed would have done the business for us to do that is a, is the is the great yeah. unknown. You know, we're not paying hundreds of thousands of pounds for a player to come in that's guaranteeing us x amount of goals or x amount <coughs> of clean sheets. You have to keep that in mind as well, just to temper this. The, you know, okay, we've had two young lads that haven't come in and done exceedingly well from from Premier League academies um, and you know we've gone down to two defenders which is kind of what I almost said um, pre-transfer window I, I vaguely remember in, in one of the podcasts um, pre-transfer window but you just don't know you yeah. know we could have just signed another misfiring striker for example uh, we could have signed a defender who gives away penalties too much or fouls or pulls shirts and gets bookings and ends up getting suspended for three games. You could have just signed a complete Wally. Well, we did. I mean, look, we signed Ollie O'Neill, right? And we all know that Ollie O'Neill is going to go on to bigger things than Leighton on. I think that much is already very clear in my eyes. He's a championship ready player. Without beating around the bush, Ollie O'Neill will be in the championship in two or three years. Whether, well, that's, whether that's from Orient oh. or not from Orient. I don't see that at the moment, but okay. You don't okay. see it? Not at the moment, no. Mate, it's literally championship. Yeah. No. I well, don't see that at the moment. Championship's only one level above. I would say Ethan Galbraith is probably massive, championship. Really. Yeah, Ethan Galbraith, championship quality, 100%. I think Oli, I think Oli, in. I'm not saying he won't, I just don't think he's there oh, yet. Oh, I think he, bear in mind, he's only been with us, what, two, three months? He's already yeah. scored some outstanding goals, and in more games than not, has been the outstanding or two of the, one of the two, three outstanding players. I mm. think he's there. Mm. I think, I can't remember where the, where the point stemmed from. Oh, if people saying... About the transfer, transfer window. Window. We have made some good signings. Yeah. I think when you said they haven't done very well, the two kids, I think you've been awfully positive in that because they haven't done anything. Yeah. Really, when, yeah. you know, look at Joe Taylor. I talk about Lincoln, Joe Taylor, who was at Colchester until t- January, got recalled because because they saw something in League 2 that made them club feel looting that he could they agree to go and do something in League 1 which they'd done so they took him out of Colchester where he was their top goal scorer they put him into Lincoln who've taken a chance on him and he's got nine goals I think he's Lincoln's top goal scorer so when you see things like that happening and you're yeah. like had we been a bit more zabby like that and maybe gone for it a bit harder but I think at the same time Dan Adji at that point was smashing him in so we didn't, it wasn't really that much of a problem at that point and at that time. So yeah. it's all ifs, buts, and maybe you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. But I think it's fair to say 
those two young lads who might go on to have glittering careers in football because yep. you never know what's going to happen yep. but they haven't really set the world alight at Leighton no they haven't and you think that with Keon being 20 years old and in Arsenal's academy on a pro contract and this is his first loan loan you know out like they've got Bukayo Saka in there who's of a similar age playing in the first team you have to probably think to yourself well actually am I going to make it at Arsenal probably not at this age this is so hard he's, he's not making it up without sounding disrespectful to, he's not making it at Arsenal yeah. Shaq Ford is 19 years old and a lot better equipped for league league one football yeah. than Edwards I, I don't know what Arsenal's yeah. problem is Arsenal won't loan players to the National League because maybe that's not what Arsenal do but at some point it feels like we've kind of been not given a dead rubber but he's not I was quite excited when we signed him had yeah. a good highlights reel yeah. very excited he's just not ready for men's football yeah. for, what, for whatever reason which is a shame so I guess there's two kind of you can either see it half full by going we signed Ollie O'Neill we signed Jack Simpson Look, they look quality on the other hand had we gone a bit harder for the attacking players and we all know from what Nigel said we did have our eye on a number nine and missed out on one yeah. right at the death yeah Got messed around. Got messed around. That might have been a difference, but yeah, or just buts and maybe's. But a good point there from Nigel. I think there's probably similar points down the episode plan at points. All right, Matty, to the frustrating end to a season of overachieving. Most of us expected and would have accepted 20th place. So to finish just outside the playoffs is a great foundation to build on next season. It is. It, it really it, is. It, We've got a good, young, exciting crop of talent. And I include completely Oli O'Neill in that. I take all your point yeah. on what you say about him. I don't... Th- and I'm not saying he won't play in the championship, but I don't see that pedigree yet. Uh, like Ethan Galbraith, I, I would be surprised if we don't get a big offer for him in the summer. Okay. Because I think he's that good. He's so standout of whatever position he plays. He's unbelievably good and way too good for us at this level. Um, he was like Idris was last season for mm. us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that you think, oh, we should go up and... Uh, and play, but I think Idris has found his level to an extent. Maybe he yeah. could, maybe he could cope at the lower half of, of of the championship. But you're talking about 19 out of them 24 teams in the championship are ex Premier League clubs, mm. right? 19 out of 24, so three quarters of that are are or 80 percent of them are are ex Prem clubs. Um, so it's a, it's a massive step up. Yeah. It is a re- it really is a big step up. Um, yeah. So so you're right. It's a really good point. You know, hopefully next season we we we've, we've got real real good solid yeah. sound foundations. Evie Stark said, I think today just showed that we're not ready for the playoffs. How can our players be tired when they had the weekend off? Close season. Something has to be done about free kicks, throw-ins, and corners as they're not good enough or dangerous. Some players aren't good enough. So peace coach. Well, I don't know if there's any out there. I mean, <laughs> the last one we had just one promotion with Hornchurch. I mean, there was a video doing rounds of Sweeney, a corner that Sweeney took on Monday that was just, I'm a big Jane Sweeney fan, I think we both are here. One of the corners he took on Monday Awful. was literally like... Just flat and straight to their player on the edge of the box. Yeah, tell boy, it's, just it's, something it might be in that EV. We'll see Jamie Ray, 72. So we create half chances, but not clear-cut opportunities. We're too slow in the final third. We missed a couple of quick finger attackers. But to be frank, we were about Aji... Graham and Theo and to be honest we didn't score loads either last season another yeah. good point there I mean Dan Happy you go, you go right if, if we have an injury free pre-season right we're going to the next bear in mind because with yeah. no additions in the squad right yeah. front three on the first game of next season with the same squad if they're all fit yeah Oli O'Neill on the left yeah Dan Adji starting as your nine and Jordan Graham as your right winner already Without anyone else, without Rel, or without any other summer signings, Piggott, because obviously Piggott is still going to be at the club, or is still contracted at the club. to the club, yeah, Ruel's That there. is an impressive front yeah. three leading your line yeah. already. Yeah, with Jordan Brown and Ethan Galbraith behind them. Exactly, without any other additions. Yeah. As a first start. Great. First name on the team. Great, but we've seen enough to go, that's a good player there. 100 Adji, again, yeah. good player there. And only yeah. only who I think, I've already kind of said my piece around Dolly. That you, that is a good. Well, you arguably, three. arguably, you would have Aggie as the front, as the nine, and out and out, and the ten would be Max Sanders or George Monker. Yeah, absolutely. And that, in its own right, is unbelievable. Yeah. So that that's that's a good solid. There's a front four. That's a good solid. Fantastic. That's a good solid yeah. Sort of With solid base. Yeah. yeah, it really is. I mean, keeping them fit all season will be the massive. Yeah, and then you say massive you, you got Gal Brave, you got. Um, Jordan Brown again who are young players who mm. will be better next season as will Adji 
as were Wally O'Neill, and as were Grant Knight. Exciting times. Really exciting. Really exciting. Who's next? Who have we got next? Uh, trousers, a techno. Free scoring, Le- uh, LC, dis- uh, Lincoln City displayed a level and style of performance not dissimilar to Stevenage. A scrappy match in which Leighton Orient seemed largely in control and the, way- and the only team likely to win it. Destroyed by a stupid error in the last minute from which there was no recovery. Season done, we move on. Boatsy said, if we just had a fit striker that could score goals, then who knows where we could have finished the season. One goal and five is a worry, but today was typical Orient. A game we should have won, but lost due to error. But that's football. Yeah, Orient Fan TV said, with getting into the playoffs seemingly gone now, I hope the last six games gives Richie a good look at the players that he wants to stay and those he wants to let go. Thoughts on today's game? Right in it until the end against the team who's scoring goals for fun. Not too disheartened. Yeah, good point. Paul S. Fisher. So I didn't see a mistake. Their scorer got lucky. The ball rebounded for him perfectly. And 99 times at 100, that would have cannoned off him for a goal kick. I mean, that's a good point. That's a really I mean, good he's point. still got to finish the chance. Yeah. And if he places it over, we don't even talk about that. In, Correct. You know, it, like, it's a passing comment. It doesn't even make it, and it's nil nil. We go at a decent point. Yeah. There. So yeah, good point there. Yeah. From Paul, we're in good shape, but time now to focus entirely on 2024, 25. And there's a good point that I hopefully I'll remember that Richie said in his post match yesterday that yesterday was the starting point for next season. season and yeah. I thought that is a spot on, mate. Yeah. I thought that is absolutely the way yeah. to look at it. Yeah. Between. Casey Adams well, it's kind of what he did in the last once he got a safe when he first came in in 2022 he, he yeah. used the last three or four games of the season to try things out Absolutely. and like he said put players in, in, in pressured situations to see how they respond and react which will then tell him who's got the desire and the aptitude to be in his squad for next season ultimately and same, same what Justin done once he got us to a point where we were safe God rest got, his soul. built that yeah. momentum up we took it straight into the following season and bosh we were there, so yeah, couldn't agree more. Right. Had to say Casey more Adams, LOFC, said nobody expected us to be where we are at this point of the year. In the long run, I think it would have been dreadful if we got promoted this season. Just enjoy the rest of the season and time to start planning for next season now. Yeah, and I think it's. I mean, I don't think it would have been dreadful to go up. I think you would have rolled with the punches had we gone up, but it yeah. may have been a bit early for it. But we will see. John W nine nine nine. Can't wait to this one. So I feel sorry for Jordan Brown, who's been excellent this season. Ultimately. We do like that cutting edge to score enough goals, but if we can secure a top 10 finish, it would have been at the top end of the realistic expectation. And the final word goes to Tommy Atkinson 6, who said, I thought every player did their bit. Ruel and Galbraith, I think both unlucky with their chances, didn't deserve to lose, lose either. Hunt or Prattley, man of the match. I hope El Miz is okay. All right, all right, some great tweets following Lincoln. Some good discussion there, I think we had. Yeah, I thought that we'd just be uh, on the second game by yeah. now, but uh, no, we got uh, held up in our tracks, which is the beauty <laughs> of doing the live podcast. All right, so it's time for the Saltire Orient Prediction League update. Only one correct prediction out of all the predictions that we got for this one. So well done to Stephen Orient. He got three points. And on top of our table, round up is following later on in the podcast. So let's move on to Saturday the 30th of March. Now the under-18s girls team played their 10th league game, having won all of the previous nine. This was against against the huge women's football organisation who play under the name of Chatham Town. This game finished 2-all, which means the O's girls remain top, but only just. That battle will run to the final day of the season when the two top sides of Leighton Orient and Kings Hill will face off. So good luck to all of you in that squad. Yeah, we will surely update you on that one mm. as it happens. All right, Sunday the 31st of March, which was Easter Sunday, we'll say congratulations to the O's under 12s who won the FC M and Easter tournament without losing a game throughout the entire tournament. Well done to the young under 12s. Love to see it. Well done. I think they, was it them who were parading around the Probably. pitch? Probably. Yeah, well done to the under 12s. Some nice little work. Uh, Nice little uh, results there and some good little uh, footballers making in the, the making. Game, yeah. Absolutely. The ladies were in action away at Tooting Beck. Game was a thriller as the O's went behind in the 10th minute and went in a goal down at half time. Yeah, second half was a bit mental this one. 50th minute, we equalised as Bates played a lovely ball over the top into the path of Cabo. <clears throat> we fired past their keeper to make it one all. But the O's didn't win and conceded two goals in two minutes. We went 3 1 down after 64 minutes, leaving us a mountain to climb. However, we pulled a goal back in the 68th due to as the duo that got the first goal got our second with the rolls reverse as Cabo whipped in across into Bates to anticipate the keeper's fumble and fired into the net to make it 3-2. 
We equalised in the 79th minute as Almeida rose highest from a corner, delivered a powerful header into the bottom corner to make it 3-3. Yeah, that's how the game stayed until the 93rd minute as Jenks Lannan won the ball high up the pitch. She slid Cabo in. She took a touch, blasted it into the far corner to make it 4-3 with a last-minute goal as the O's won the game for free. Love to see it. Well done to the ladies there on a terrific result. Indeed. Congratulations to you. Monday the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, but the main event of that was Peterborough United at home. The team was announced at 2 o'clock. Bryn in goal as usual. James, Beckles, Cooper and Sweetie with a back four. Brown and Galbraith in the middle with a front three of Moncur, Ford, Moncur and O'Neill and Adu Ajay running the line uh, up top. Subs for this were Howes, Hunt, Sanders, Aggie, Satiriu, Piggott and Keon Edwards. All right, that meant there were a few changes for those uh, for the side who started against Lincoln. No Dan Prattley in the squad as well as no Idris El Mazzuni. He obviously picked up a book in uh, the game we just spoken about. Whilst in came George Moncur, Jaden Sweeney and Dan Adu Adji who made his starting debut as we also two dropped to the bench. Yeah, Idris was injured. Yes, just so that. He said booking. I said what, sorry? Booking. Oh, did I? Yeah. Yeah, he was injured. Dan Adji back from his injury and took his place on the bench while former O's midfielder Hector Kipriano started for our opponents. Unless I completely misheard you, I thought you said he picked up a booking in his last game. Fine. All right, let's go. Let's go. Your views? Yeah, lots of changes to that starting lineup, like lots. I thought all very capable, mind. Um, it'd be good to see Sweeney, I feel, for Rob Hunt, though. I'm a big fan of Rob Hunt. I, again, I think I might be in a minority. I think he's a good fullback. He likes to get forward. I quite like that about him. Not sure I'd start Adu Ajay for this one, though. Not sure what the thinking was behind that. Uh, especially when you've got Pigger on on the bench, not you know, good to see Aggie back, but obviously he's not ready uh, for this. Um, you know, even though Pigger hasn't had like the best of seasons, you know, against the big Peterborough side, I, I'd still be inclined to give him the the, the nod over um, over um, Adu Ajay, but you know, I don't get paid to do that, so that's, uh, that's completely up to Richie. And obviously, like I say, it's good to have Dan Aggie back as well for you. I was. I just seen your note. Yeah. I was running around Butlins in Bogdan Regis having the time of my life, <laughs> and I saw the two o'clock tweet, and I saw Adu Adjay up front, and I was a bit. I was a bit. I was a bit flummoxed. I must say, I didn't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't understand it, and I don't think. Unless yeah. I missed it in post match, I don't think Richie explained his thinking behind it either. Although he might have done. I can't remember the interview, but I just looked at that and I thought, what on earth is going on here? He's a lone player. Starting above Satiriu and starting above Joe Piggott as well. Like you said, Joe Piggott has had a pretty poor season by everyone's standard. Massive disappointment. But look, we know we're not going to playoffs now. Surely you start him now, especially in a game like this, and try and build his confidence going into the next season. Even even if one goes in off his shoulder, off his butt off his cheek, side, yeah, doesn't matter. Just as long as it goes in. I know Peter are a good team one of the teams who you'd expect to be favourites and are up there and will make the playoffs, undoubtedly. Yeah. However, I don't understand why you'd play an inexperienced 19, 20-year-old give him his debut in this game against one of the most difficult sides, especially, like I said, over to two. Mm. I, I was very surprised by that. Good to see Adji on the bench. I thought we'd see Adji on the bench sooner rather than later from yeah, the bench in the, in the last podcast. Yeah. That'd been on three weeks ago. I mean, Charlie Pepe just signed a two-and-a-half deal with us, right? He's not alone anywhere unless we've missed it, but I don't think we've sent him out alone. He's at the club training. Surely you put Pegram in yeah. now. Surely you go, right, Edwards, thank you. Yeah. But no thank you. Yeah. Adu Adji, thank you. No thank you. Surely now you push on your squad players, or like I said, you try and get Pegram ready in a mindset to go again next season and hope he can get a goal or two to push him into next season. Mm. I'm confident. We've done it yeah. the same with Paul Smith where he had a terrible start in his first six months of his running career. Richie come in, built up his confidence. He finished that season really strongly and then took it straight into the following season and he was ready. Surely now, surely that must be the thinking with Piggott, right? Mm. Well, that's what you'd expect. Yeah, so you think so. Right? I was really surprised when I, I saw that. It either. I was really surprised when I saw that. Other than that, not too many surprises within there. But yeah, I just thought, I can't see how we're really going to trouble this defence we've had to actually lead in the line, really. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of tweets though. When that team was announced. Quite a few actually. Better later never said looks like Pratt's is injured. I'm worried we'll miss his experience and not to mention his energy. Yeah, good point there. Rainbow Sailor said a strong team given all our injuries. Great choices on the bench. Awesome Dan Adji is back and could today be Piggott's hat trick. 
1985. Gorillas, 1985. People laughed at me two weeks ago when I suggested Aggie would be on the bench today. He's bound to get the winner now. Paul Red Rum. So a very attack-minded team today, which I like. But we will miss El Miss in midfield. And the midfield might be a bit light, but at least we have a bit of width now with O'Neill back. Come on, you O's. Yeah, so the match kicked off in a chilly and sunny E10 with the O's looking uh, to go... Uh, I think that's end. To end the season, uh, yeah, strongly against the Petra team, almost certain of a playoff place and looking to bounce back from their shock 3-1 home defeat to Carlisle on Good Monday. All right. Oh, sorry, on Good Friday, sorry. <laughs> let's do it. Again, I'm going to cover this one fairly briefly. A superb inception of a crossfield pass by Jaden Sweeney. He saw a shot deflect out for our first corner of the game in the second minute. Yeah, three minutes later, penalty appeals from the O's were waved away by the referee after a handball was called for in the Peterborough box. All right, in the eighth minute, the posh took the lead after a cross on the left was mishandled by Sol Brin. The ball fell into the path of Hector Kipriano and he easily tapped in from around 10 yards out to score against his former club to make it 1-0 to the visitors. I mean, other than to state the obvious, Sol Brin should have caught that. <laughs> Not much else to say there. And that's the problem. When you're in goal, you make one mistake, nine times out of ten it leads to a goal. Oh, absolutely. I and mean, that's the problem. You make one up top, it doesn't, or in the middle, there's a phase of recovery. You make one there, it just drops it, it just miscatches it and, and it just falls in. Yeah, horrific, I would say. Yeah. Um, family show though, so I can't say anything too. Uh, yeah, you know. it was poor, but it'll, it'll know it's poor. Oh, absolutely. All right, so one all down. Hector, to be fair, didn't really celebrate, really. He goes runs off. No, he runs hands. off. I mean, he celebrates in a kind of calm way. Yeah, so that, but that's fine. Like, he's, not, he's been our player for a couple of years now, so... Like it is what it is, but yeah. I appreciate the respect that he's shown us. Yeah. In the 18th minute, absolutely outstanding sliding challenge inside our box from Jaden Sweeney as he denied Mason Clark, who had been played in and was about to pull the trigger. That was absolutely superbly timed. He could have really given a penalty away there. That is a brilliant, brilliant piece of defending there uh, from, from Jaden. And the referee had been given lots of sort of cheap free, what I call cheap free kicks. It's yeah. like someone goes down with you know, with the faintest of touches, referee blows his whistle. Yeah. The guy trips over his shadow, referee blows the whistle. It's that kind of referee that we had. 22 minutes on the clock, free kick was awarded to Peterborough about 25 yards out. Nothing came, came of it. Yeah. Cheap free kick to award again, another one. All right, 25th minute in the lead. It was a double for Peterborough. Short corner move, saw an Adjiboy cross, headed back across goal by night. Went across Salbrin and Mason Clark somehow stooped to get the ball over the line from close range with the back of his head. Made it 2 0. Not sure, I haven't, I should have seen that back. I should, I've just, it's just prompted me. I'm not sure if that was offside. At the time, I thought it looked like he was offside. I mean, mm. obviously, it didn't get offside, uh, didn't get flagged for offside, but he was literally, his head was like millimetres off the line yeah. when he's headed it in. So he's on the floor. I don't know if he's. I don't know how he's become. I don't know how he's come to be on the floor. <laughs> like he's fallen yeah. over or something in some sort of comical way. He's fallen over. And the ball's gone to the line, and it's kind of like hit his head, and he's just like extended his neck a bit and just pushed it into the goal. To me, that looked like he would have been offside for that. But again, obviously, it wasn't given, and there's no point crying over spilt milk. It's the, you know the goal stood. It certainly did. I mean, he's a great player. They're going to miss him next season. I mean, obviously, you guys, it's gone to commentary. So can't you have signed him? They've just signed him back to the end of the season. He's going to be a big player. Yeah. Again, another championship ready player for them. But yeah. to be two down after twenty five minutes, I think shows you kind of how this game yeah. was going to go. Right. We've got nothing else to say about the first half other than two additional minutes were played, and in the first minute Steer made his first save of the game from an Ethan Galbraith shot. As the halftime was went shortly after, with our visitors two 0 up. Yeah, eight thousand seven hundred and fifty eight was the official attendance, with eleven hundred and ninety four packed into the away end. Not our best half of football, as far as I'm concerned. I thought Sweeney, O'Neill and Galbraith had been good. Ford looks like he asked... Ha. Ford was poor. All right. Ford looked disinterested. The kind of guy that looked like he'd you know, put in a holiday request at work for, <laughs> for Easter Monday. And, and, and HR said, no, sorry, you can't, like, you can't have All that right. day off. And he just couldn't be less fussed. Really? Okay, that's surprising. Really surprising. I don't know whether he wasn't well, whether he was just a bit injured or whatever... I don't know, um, but the lack of running, the lack of tracking, the lack of avail- making himself available, just yeah, it wasn't the best I've seen of Shaq Ford. All right, interesting. A few tweets came in at half time. PF zero one zero triple six. So with the exception of Jaden Sweeney, this has been absolutely shocking. Peterborough, nothing special. Yeah, but they don't have to be spot on. 
absolutely spot on. They weren't anything special and they didn't have to be. We literally gifted them two goals. Kid Sampson O said some excellent on the beat on the beach performances so far. Ford and Monker are particularly culpable, but you could pick anyone not to name Ethan Galbraith, <laughs> and you'd probably be right. Hopefully some of them will now show a modicum of professional pride in the second half. Great tweet. All right, okay. Triple sub for the O's at half time. I guess you could probably tell by that. Yep. Richie less than happy. Shaq Ford came off, was replaced by Rob Satu. Dan Aduadre was replaced by Joe Piggott. And Tom James came off, was replaced by Tom. Yeah, uh, wasn't Robert. very good either. Wasn't very good either. Wasn't he one of his better games? All right, again, yeah. some big, big subs there. All right, let's go into the 46 minute probably, to... probably people that should have started the game in the first place. Yes, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't disagree with you uh, for two out of those three. We'll see. Look to make an instant impact. He took on a couple of defenders in the area. His left footed strike was blocked. Yeah, 10 minutes later, the fourth sub for the O's, Richard seen enough. George Moncur came on. He was replaced by Max Sanders. All right, XO Kipriani was at it again in the 59th minute. He had a curling effort wide from the edge of our box following a counter attack. 65th minute, we pulled a goal back after Jaden Sweeney that ran down the left, played a smart one two with Ollie O'Neill, and his cross was expertly side footed home by Ethan Galbraith to make it 2 1 and get us back in the game. Superb goal. Really good Superb goal. Superb technique from him as well. Really good finish. I mean, April's goal of the month already looks like it's going to be very difficult. Got that goal and he got all three from yesterday that we yeah. obviously talked oh. about. Later. That's, going four, to be, that's all four, four nominees. That's going to be a, a difficult goal in the month to that decide. That's a great shout. Great take uh, yeah. uh, from Ethan Galbraith. Great cross as well. Love to see it. All right, so at that point, only one goal behind. About half hour left to play, give or take. Still in it. In the 69th minute, Jones robbed Omar Beckles. Race cleared down the left. His shot was kept out by legs of Brim. And Ajibay blazed over with the rebound from a tight angle. Beckles. Always something in that, Omar Beckles. Two... Too casual, too cool, Louis lost out, should have yeah. been 3-1. Yeah. Very lucky there, Omar. Very lucky. Again. <laughs> Ruel Saturi was booked for a foul in the 70th minute. In the 78th minute, the O's went so close to an equaliser as Jed Steer made a great save as he turned away. And Ethan Galbraith shot that took a massive deflection on its way in and it was going in. Somehow to keep it tipped over. Unlucky there from the O's. Yeah, that Jed Steer was playing for Aston Villa a couple of years ago. I don't know how he's like ended up being at Peterborough. In, the, in, in League One okay. or mind you maybe sign for them in the Championship um, however um, fifth, fifth and final sub for the O's Ollie O'Neill made way for the super Dan Aggie in the 82nd minute he had a return in Dan Aggie in the 88th minute he had a chance he was unmarked oh. from very close range as Max Sanders sent in the corner and Aggie was there headed it over yeah free header alone in the box jumps up just sort of He's looking over the bar and the ball goes over the bar. So you can really tell that that wasn't going to hit the target. I think a fully alert and fully fit Adji, who's played like a lot of football scores at without even thinking about it. But yeah, I think at that point we all knew that was how it was done. And uh, all I will say, if that's Joe Piggott who misses that chance, Slaughtered. all the tweets post-match will be about that miss. Slaughtered. He would be absolutely um, demonised. Mm. All right, yeah. four minutes of additional time went up on the board. No major talking points in those four minutes, unfortunately, as the match ended with the O's falling to a 2-1 defeat to make it a miserable Easter weekend for the Orient with two matches and two defeats. Indeed. So that defeat, though, means that we will stay in 10th place uh, in League One. We've now played 41 games, 16 of those were wins, 10 were draws, 15 are losses, 58 points on the table and a goal difference of minus two. And obviously Richie's interview is on the club's YouTube channels and on their social media, so you can go and check that out. Yeah, he did make me laugh when he praised Peter. He said when, like, when they won, they just went and clapped their fans and then walked off the pitch and didn't celebrate too much. He was like, every time other clubs have beaten us here, they do like the old fist pumps. And he thinks that it's like embarrassing. He said, Peter, bro, totally well-drilled agree. unit, don't want to have to do, clap their fans, then make their way off. Yeah, not, not going for them to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I thought, thought Richie was quite very made point. a few good points. All right, Mr. Levy, you were there. I wasn't. Let's have your views on the match. Yeah, look, I thought we did well at times. I thought much improved in the second half with our press, better decision making, and forward passing. Two poor goals we've conceded. Solbrin's been punished for not catching, and we didn't defend well enough to prevent uh, the second goal. To be perfectly honest, despite two easy goals, they looked good value at times and played some nice stuff. I thought there was one particular passing move that they got around us and moved it up the pitch superbly well. Uh, they've got good defenders who can play out from the back, yeah. which I think is really important. And I listened to Jack Simpson's 
um, pre-match interview uh, on Friday and about him being a ball-playing centre-back as well. And I think that at this level and the type of football that Richie wants to play, I think that those sorts of players are going to be uh, very well needed. Um, thought Sweeney was excellent today. I thought Hunt came on. I thought he did OK. Gabraith, absolute standout to our point earlier. Yeah, mm. championship ready player. Yeah. Um, head and shoulders above everyone else. Absolutely superb. Brown didn't do too badly either, I didn't think. Uh, I thought it was the right decision to take Shaq Ford off at half time. Terrible, arguably for me, his worst performance so far. No big deal. It's his first proper season in, yeah. in this league. He's done very well, quitted himself very well. Um, also hope for George Mon- hoped more from George Moncur as well. I, I thought an experienced player playing against a ball playing side and one of his former clubs would do much better. Good point. I honestly thought he would. When when like meets like, I thought that he would kind of gel into the game mm. and dictate, and you know, but he didn't. All right. I mean, my views are so my views are tiny because I thought I wasn't going to be doing this match. So yeah. literally, shocking goals to concede. Like first one, Bruin, he catches that ball ninety nine times over hundred. Yeah, it's a freak. But you know, it falls to the wrong player for them to fall to, and they score. Second one's just poor defending. Yeah. I think you, you can't really defend like that. Mentioned the selection of the team, it was wrong. In our eyes, it was wrong. Obviously, in Richie's eyes, it was right. I thought it was very questionable. I will say in that post-match interview, I think anyone hasn't seen it, it's worth watching because that's the most critical I've seen Richie Wellens be of his team. In terms of he, he literally says, says we don't have any centre forwards so who can finish, and we dilly dally too much, and we don't get the ball to a centre forward. Five or six passes, yeah. And I thought, well, you have a centre forward because you've put someone into that position who's a centre forward. So I thought it was quite an interesting, um, quite an interesting points he was making. I couldn't work out who he was being critical of, whether it was aimed at players or people above him. I couldn't work out what the point he was trying to make or to whom at points where he was trying to take the interview. It was an interesting one, I thought. But yeah, my views, nice and short on that one. Didn't cool. go. I've got no... Uh, desire to go back and watch the extended highlights of that having seen the goals but oh, look another day Agi scores that and we're going great point to yeah. come back from two down Yeah. but again like I say if Piggott misses that chance all our tweets will be about how bad Piggott is yeah. so, but also Sol Green doesn't drop that for the second yeah, for absolutely. the first goal they don't necessarily get absolutely. the second tiny tiny margins, margins yeah. alright let's do it first tweet uh, followed from full time to us was Poplar32 so disappointed the several players today showed little interest. Went to higher like Moncur, Ford and Piggott. Gabraith was outstanding and needs to stick in midfield. I'm just hoping we can pick up a couple more wins before the end of the season and we need to lose the Deadwood ASAP. Mark Ros, 6368950. So that was a fl- very flattering 2-1. It should have been 5 or 6. We never laid a glove on them and Hector ran the midfield. That is also a really good point. Hector did. He was superb. I mean, they what? They turned down a reportedly £3 million, £3 million. In January. For Hector, I imagine if they've turned down three million, they're going to get an increased offer in the summer. You're looking at yeah. about four or five million to probably yeah. get them out of there now. Yeah. And we do have a sell on fee, don't we? There is some kind of sell yeah. on the fee. So, I mean, that again, the fact that if Hector goes, we get a sell on fee, that could be the difference between getting someone like Idris in or someone yeah. not as good or maybe getting someone better. Yeah. Than but him. that said, if they get to the championship next season and Hector's playing regular championship football, will he want to move? Well, possibly, yeah, I mean, possibly, yeah. If, All if, if, if they make yeah. it, but yeah, I mean, not, maybe not, that not to say, not, it, it, not to say that club who put a bid or be a base championship club, yeah. who now have got aspirations eyes, to be in the yeah, 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 be interesting. Yeah, but again, if he goes for five million and you've got, I, I don't know what to come with, if it's 20% of a five and we've million. We've paid. Deal, which is a million quid, That's a and then less what they've paid us, which was about 300. 200, 300 grand, so 700 grand that will come to us. Decent. Over however many seasons, yeah, yeah. I don't know how that, that side of things work. Yeah, absolutely. Decent. Um, yes, yeah, Samuel OC 97. Yeah, you want to say the difference was both boxes story this season, really. They had their best forward players fit, and ours were all injured and coming back. Second half performance wasn't terrible. Change in the press and a bit of work ethic helped. Galbraith... Sweeney, overall, both had decent games. Yeah, just realised, didn't finish Mark's tweet. He went uh, finished by saying, toothless in there without Idris and Prattley, and we won't have either next season. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, Dan Orton, 2590, said, no qualms about the result. The right team won. They were by far and away the better side and should have been out of sight by the break. Improved the second half in the second half, but you felt they could have scored again at any point. Scary that in 2024, that's not a bad ref. That's the norm. That's quite scary. If I'm not mistaken, if I remember rightly, it was the guy who was the first South Asian 
referee in the Premier League who refereed at Palace a okay. couple of weeks ago. All right. Um, so Premier League referee, effectively. Yeah. All right, pandemonium, 1881. So today's game showed us exactly where we need to aspire to be. They soaked up 15, 20 minutes of decent football, got a little bit of luck and showed their quality going forward. And after that, comfortable on the ball with some very good League One experience. We gave it a go in the second half. And if it hadn't been for an unfortunate goalkeeping mistake, I had we had a bit more about us in the final mm. third, we'd have got a point. Yeah. All about learning and improving, but we are on the right track. Dear Stu said, first 20 minutes, we looked okay despite being a goal down. Should have had a penalty for a handball. Shaq looked completely disinterested. Second half, gave it a go. With better final balls, could have nicked a point. Take a bow, Ethan. Superb. Sweens was okay. Gary Talbot, seven. So Richie Wednesday knows exactly what we need and several who started that game won't be what he needs. An awful start and what is looking a very poor end, bookended by a decent middle season, has kept us afloat. Yeah, the tipping team said the result's irrelevant, but once again it shows how much we struggle without El Miz. They absolutely killed our midfield and it should have been five or six. Superb El Miz is dragging up a few players who will struggle in his absence and that doesn't bode well for next season. And there's OK52, so that performance from Ethan is one of the best individual performances I've seen in ages, but sadly... He can't do it all on his own. If we're building for next season, we could do worse. And to build it all around him, that boy has got real quality. Indeed. David Sears 3 said, Bryn needs to be binned off. He's done well, but won't be here next season. The mistake in the first half was shocking and Howes needs to be given a chance now as we have nothing to play for. It's a good point in terms of Howes being started for the last few games of the season. Yeah, I mean, I think Sal Bryn's going to come up quite a lot, I think, in post-match uh, yeah. for Chum. So I guess yeah. we'll come back to him. But... If he's rotating pretty much everywhere else other than keeper and again Bryn isn't an Orient player and he's already gone and said we can't afford to sign Sol Bryn for the money Bill yeah. wants so it's not a bad point there at all Matty LFC Evans so two moments showcased Orient this season Bryn's mistake for their goal and then Gail Brave's goal next season we go again a Dan Adger cameo wasn't something I was expecting but we need to get him sharp for the pre-season next season it's been a solid season and no need for any meltdowns. Yeah, D. John's 1998 said the majority of the team are on holiday. I think we have a few players to move on and some key places that need rectifying. Ford looks knackered. O'Neill started with dribbling past everyone and now all he does is pass the ball backwards. That's a really interesting point because when he did come, what got us out of our seats and really excited was about him was that he would take players on. Yeah. Now he's cutting back. It's almost like we've coached that, that out, out of yeah. him, that rawness that you just love to see out of him, yeah. which is, I think, what's potentially made me think that actually maybe he's not that you know, championship ready yet. And I think that's probably playing into my thought process there. He does, he does. He cuts back and passes it backwards. Um, terrible football from us in the first half, just to finish that tweet. The untold game, so I'm still very happy with a Brown, Galbraith, Sanders future. Midfield, I think Galbraith can do El Miss's job wonderfully. What he might not do, that Elmis does, is everyone else's job too. <laughs> Cleaning up mistakes and making everyone else look 20% better. Amish, great tweet. Amish and Mo said, 2-1 flattered us. Much better from us in the second half, although Peterborough took their foot off the gas. I'd like to think that we would have given them a better run for their money if Graham, Archibald and Elmis were available and Aggie was fully fit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, different team. different game. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with that. Gould Howard, penultimate tweet in this one. Says, I would say, Peterborough are where we would like to be. Include yeah. our first choice missing players and we are not far off that. It's a compliment to players and staff that we're disappointed with a great league position and our first season back at this level. And so, bodes well for next season. Good point. Yeah, indeed it does. Sunshine LOFC got the final word this week. Said, overall the better team won today. No two ways about that. However, it was a much improved second half performance and Aggie could have nicked the leveller late on. There is much to be optimistic about for 24-25 up the O's. Great stuff there. All right, prediction league had a few more successful uh, predictions. This one, Dave Brew, 47976911. And Till Annie, a few other wide and Mr. JG Essex, Rob, JB1974, record blow up. And I Rob, all predicted two one to our visitors. No one got the bonus points, so you all got three points, and we'll round up British League at the end of this episode. Yep, so that wraps up Peterborough and Lincoln's. That's Easter weekend done. So the last seven days, Tuesday, or five days as it is really, Tuesday the 2nd of April, nothing to report, so let's move on. Let's do that. Wednesday the 3rd of April, another birthday at the club, this time to O's assistant manager, Paul Terry. Hope you had a lovely day, Paul, and had a good one. Yeah, indeedy. The club announced that both Retro Day and the O-Nuts will be making a welcome return for the forthcoming match against Cheltenham Town. Who doesn't love Retro Day? I guess oh, we'll start at Retro Day. So you were wearing your Raiden Steel blue shirt with your Autograph. wife. Yeah. 
That was the Hartlepool home kit that season. I remember, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. And you had it fully signed, right? So Yeah, I don't remember how I got it fully signed or where I got it fully signed, but I got it fully signed. I was wearing I think I must have won it. My uh ninety two, ninety three independent transport that. that I bought as a fantastic twelve year old boy. Imagine though you were twelve wearing that. I know. Right? Well my mum my mum made me buy like large and I must have Future been like proof, very small. It? She did, she absolutely did. Yeah. I always love wearing that t shirt. All right, I mean, that's retro day, that obviously happened. That yeah. was great, everyone wearing retro shirts. What's happened to the donuts? Where are the donuts? Mr. Devlin, you promised us donuts. Yeah. Where were they? What happened? <laughs> oh, and honestly, though, what actually had happened to the donuts? I've heard rumours. I'm not going to sp- speculate what the rumours were. I just want to know what happened to the donuts. Let us know what happened because we're all looking forward to them. Yeah. Very, very disappointed. Suspicious. Not to get my own Maybe someone ate. Maybe someone got into them and they ate when they sold out. All right. Also announced a bit of happy news. The club secretary Lindsay Martin has been nominated for the EFL Club Employee Award, with the ceremony taking place in a week's time on Sunday, the fourteenth of April. If anyone deserves any kind of award, it's Lindsay. We yeah. wish her well. She's obviously up against people who do just as great jobs as her at their significant clubs as well so I think all those people are massive winners it'd be lovely yeah. to see Lindsay get rewarded fingers crossed she does but if not what a compliment to be kind of nominated for that award yeah. that way. absolutely spot on Thursday the 4th of April another birthday this time happy birthday to Leighton Orient SLO Robbie Minchin we hope you had a great day as well mate oh yeah absolutely alright Friday the 5th of April quiet day at the club nothing else to report Let's go for it. Saturday, the 6th of April. Yeah, the youth team were in action against AFC Wimbledon and we took the lead in the 23rd minute thanks to an own goal. We went 2-0 up in the 39th minute when Abdi Mohamed scored. The Dons pulled a goal back on the stroke of half-time and then equalised in the 53rd minute before taking a 3-2 lead in the 74th minute and adding a fourth in the 93rd minute. And to cap a miserable day, Chinedo was shown a red card in the 95th minute as the Young O's lost 4-2. So unlucky... To you. That is the first time I've lost in ages. Absolutely. From I can't remember talking about or a new defeat in a long time. All right, Cheltenham Town at home was the main event on Saturday. And as always, before the game, we ran our Twitter poll again to find out how you thought the O's were getting this one. We had 202 votes with you voting with 11% of you thinking the O's would lose. So a, a minority there thinking we'd lose. 15% thinking we'd draw. So again, not many of you thinking we'd draw with a huge, overwhelming, whopping majority 74% of you thinking the O's would win. As always, thanks to everyone who voted in our Twitter poll. Indeed. Lower numbers than uh, we've expected, experienced this uh, season so far, but thanks to all of you who did vote. The team was announced at 2 o'clock. Sol Brin as standard in goal. Galbraith, Beckles, Cooper, James, Brown, Obiero, Moncur, O'Neill, Sotiriu and Edwards completing the starting 11. Substitutes for this one were Howes, Hunt, Simpson, Sanders, Ford, Aggie and Pigger. All right, that meant there were three changes from the team. We started against Peter Bryce in Cape Zek, Obiero, and Ruel Satuyu, and Kyle and Edwards, with Shaq Ford dropping to the bench <coughs> as Dan Aduadji and Jaden Sweeney dropped out of the squad completely. And Jack Simpson, who we spoke about at the beginning of this podcast, making the bench following the end of his suspension. So first time he's been available. Yep. He obviously done that the pre-match interview on the club's YouTube channel which went out on the Friday spoke very well spoke about how he's been out in the community I guess a bit of the forgotten man obviously we signed him about two months ago a lot of controversy yeah. around that signing as you would suspect and as you would understand it's come from a lot to kind of repair kind of not the damage that's been done but I'd say to kind of get people on side around that so an interesting selection there bit of Lejande, what are your views at 2 o'clock when you saw that team yeah I- I'm a bit surprised Rob Hunt isn't playing, as I may have mentioned once or twice. I'm a big fan. Um, but then, I, you know, and Galbraith perhaps move further forward. Um, I think the guy's done well in the last game. Rob Hunt. Did, Rob Hunt. Right. Done well enough. He's certainly no worse than anyone else. And, and as a natural right back, why not have him in and then release Galbraith to play further forward? If anyone else wants to join the Rob Hunt fan club, email us at orientoutlook.com. I'll give you a membership card and everything. Title your email, Rob Hunt uh, Appreciation Society. Mark it for Mr. Beard and Lejande and we'll get you your card in those Absolutely. <laughs> Lots of other goodies as well. Good to see Zach Obiero, Charles. Yeah. I really hope he does well. That was such a standout name on the team sheet for me today. Um, such a nice guy. I had a chat with him. I think he lives just up the road in Hainault here. So I got the train home randomly once and he All got right. off at Hainault. Oh, really? And he was walking down the steps of Hamer Station, so I had a quick chat with him. Such a nice guy uh, as well. Edwards um, hadn't done as well as I'd hoped in past games, but hopefully he'll do well um, up top uh, today, given his chance with Ruel 
because I thought that Richie had maybe tinkered with the side uh, and he'd gone four one three two. The tactics, yeah. Yeah, I thought he tweaked it a bit, but that wasn't the case. Where's Jaden? <laughs> I don't know. Chris, who sits behind us, said that he'd done a fitness test on the pitch before, so maybe he'd taken a knock in training or something. David but, Victor asked Richie, and Richie didn't like the question. Shot it down. Have I not listened to that yet? Did he really? Yeah. Didn't okay. like the question. Okay. Basically, it's like not much else to say. Like Richie kind of knocked back the question. Right. Didn't really answer it. Okay. I thought Simpson might get his first start now he's able to play to give Omar uh, a rest or, or maybe mm. even Brandon a rest, but that wasn't the case to be. Yeah, I mean, some big, big calls in there. Again, starting Edwards, like you said, not done as well as what we'd like them to do. To have Adu Adjay starting as your nine and then to have a completely out of squad. Yeah. And the same as Sweeney. Probably tells me what I need to know about Adu Adjay. Like, we didn't mention him in terms of anything he'd done in that 45 minutes. No. Sweeney, though, on the other hand, is a bit more surprising given that yeah, we mentioned it. Obviously, I wasn't at the game, but a lot of people said Sweeney seemed to do it okay, very well. In their back position, and I see him not in the squad. Probably a bit of a surprise there. Some big, big opportunities at Obiero. I think it was a moment to a National League South side about two months ago. So to see him start in a League One game, yeah, quite surprising. I expect to see him on the bench, maybe. Yeah. I didn't expect to see him start. Yeah, but if he if he deserves it, then fair play to him. Um, no surprise to see Simpson on the bench. Obviously, I, I thought he would feature at some point. Obviously, we've only got two fit centre backs, so to, I knew he would make the bench after suspension. So I thought we might see him play. Obviously, we're talking about the game uh, as it happened. But again, got Piggott sitting there on the bench, and you're playing Edwards ahead of him. Come on, I'm not Piggott's biggest fan, but I still think we need to get him in gear for next season to get him ready and to get, like I said, that confidence up. Yeah. I think it's going to be really, really important for us. All right, lots of tweets coming when that team was announced. James O'Hagan said, clearly in the uh, quote-unquote experimental phase of the season, keen to see Edwards and Obiero prove their points. Surprise Simpson hasn't started. Adji, hopefully, should get at least half an hour. I'm cautiously optimistic. Sonny M222 said, why, why is Galbraith at right-back after that performance the other day? Yeah, good point. David Carroll once said, Richie, promise changes and great to see Zek getting a chance. This probably is Caden's last chance to impress. And no Sweeney in the squad. Kind of with the uh, yeah. thinking. Len Chin Chin one said, end of season games are always difficult as every team is wanting points. Cheltenham will not be easy as they need to get out of the relegation zone. The O's must dictate the pace and give respect, defend well, see the game as a cup final, play a clinical, concentrated effort to win. Always love Len Chin Chin's post yeah. pre-match tweets. All right, Cheltenham got the match underway in a warm and windy Brisbane Road as the O's were looking to recover from back-to-back defeats against our visitors who were looking for points to get out of the relegation place. I mean, considering they didn't score a goal in their first 10 games and they haven't been relegated yet, it's some achievement by them and they are taking it's it true. to the last couple of weekends. All right, let's do it. Charlton, I think it's fair to say, started better. Came close to opening and scoring in the eighth minute after Freeston putting across, it wasn't dealt with. Lloyd beat Omar Beckles to the ball, but his touch went just wide of the far post. Bit of a wake-up call for us but Beckles in particular because you can't be so nonchalant or, or so lay, laid back in the box just doesn't work that way first quarter of the game came in the 15th minute after some nifty footwork from Ruel sent his defender to the ground to win a corner from which Tom James's fierce shot was then blocked alright we're going to fast forward now to the 33rd minute we took the lead to some nice passing and movement eventually saw Edwards bring the ball down well inside the box he played Ollie O'Neill who then passed on to George Moncur who was at the edge of the box he played a pass to Ethan Galbraith, who fired into the top corner from a good 25 yards out to make it one of the O's and to score his second goal in successive games. That's a superb strike. Great, great finish. I think the keeper should do better there. Mm. And Richie said it's the a bit same. Bit of a rocket. Richie said the same. Really? He, he, have you, you seen it back? Yeah. He kind of gets his hands to it, which aren't yeah. strong enough. I think I think I, to, I think Jed Steer probably tips it over the bar. Oh, just. Maybe. Yeah. I, I was going to say I think you're being a bit bit harsh on but, the guy because it was a great strike wrong. it's, a good, when it's, you a, put it like it's that. a good strike but their keep their keep will be disappointed you can see how disappointed their keeper is yeah like oh, like in his reaction kind of like puts his hands to his face a little bit for like the first two seconds should have done better but you, you don't expect got, him to save it to be fair because that is a decent strike but you're right you've got a hand to it I, so he'd I be think disappointed I think a better game. keeper saves yeah. it but, but don't take everything away from Ethan Galbraith yeah well drilled into the top bins all right one nil two minutes later and the other one on top now, Rusia Terry did well. He took a shot from close range, which got spilled out 
but we couldn't capitalise yeah, on it. Yeah, Leo's almost doubled the lead in the 39th minute. Ruel again had an effort saved by Southwood. O'Neill's rebound was then blocked, and then Edwards couldn't get on the end of a ball of the ball that had curled up into the air. Um, it was just a little bit too awkward for him, but he did try. Uh, he couldn't get on the end of that. Yeah, I mean, though. look, Edwards is, is running his heart out. He's trying his best. He just hadn't ultimately had any luck, you know. I think if he got one, he might have got two, but just not to be mm-hmm. his day in that one. But we did double our lead in the 43rd minute and lovely goal. As Jordan Brown, outside of the boot pass, bounced back to him. A bit of luck there, a bit fortunate. Yeah. He passed Ollie O'Neill on the edge of the box. He took a touch, looked up, saw it on, and he put a spectacular curling effort into the far side of three stones goal to make it 2-0 to the O's. What a goal. What a superb goal. Two beautiful goals in this game so far. It's only the first half. Absolutely superb. Take a bow. Nothing else to say about that. Great goal. Like he's contender for goal of the goal of the month. Knew right. exactly what he was doing. As soon as he takes that first touch, beautiful looks up. No keeper. I said to Stim, oh, I bet a league one keeper saves the cow brace. No league one keeper. It's no keeper is saving that. I think just because the way he's put it just lovely, beautifully into the far corner. Yeah. Beautiful finish. Good quality finish. 2 0. Love to yeah. see it from Ollie O'Neill. Four additional minutes were played on without any major talking points, and we went in with a two goal lead at half time. Basically, thanks to two superb goals. Indeed, I thought it was a decent half, and I think we're well deserving of our lead. I mean, two worldies, they've not really come and shown anything, to be honest with you. Um, that, that's, you know, should say that they should have anything out of this game so far, but it has taken two spectacular goals for us to go in. I think at 0 0. They were the better team. I think I've got to be honest. They they look better than us. I think at times, yeah. Their their eight and thirty four look quite industrious. But that once we went one up, they were done. Like, yeah. Seven thousand eight hundred and four packed into Brisbane Road. Four hundred and eighty nine of those were Cheltenham Town fans. All right, let's move on. No changes for the O's at half time. And in the fifty second minute, Jordan Brown booked for preventing Cheltenham from taking a quick free kick. Cheap for cheap booking that. Yeah. Can't be doing that. Seconds later, though, Cheltenham almost pulled a goal back. After Sol Bryn misjudged the free kick, Davies looked to prod home, but Bryn did enough to recover and prevent him from scoring. Yeah, just about 58 minutes. Ethan Galbraith picked up a book in for taking too long to take a throw. 61st minute, or in, uh, 61st minute, our first sub of the day as Omar Beckles made way for O's debutant Jack Simpson. Yeah, so Simpson making his debut in I think his first match in a long time. Or his yeah, first since competitive since since match. Since August, yeah. Yeah, all right, 64th minute, only O'Neill. Was booked for kicking a number two up the backside as he was breaking away. He kicked him up in the air a little bit there, didn't he? Late booking, but he had to do it. What had to be done had to be done. 67th minute now. Sol Brim made a good save to deny Lloyd from scoring after a good counter from the visitors. All right, two minutes later, double sub for the O's as Ollie O'Neill was replaced by Shaq Ford and Kyle Edwards was replaced by Dan Energy. I mean, to bring my forward and Energy with 20 minutes left, it's pretty pretty strong substitutions. Yeah, Yeah. if we're getting the, the, the Shaq Ford that wasn't at Peterborough. Yeah, absolutely right. 72nd minute, very close for Cheltenham, but their man just fired wide. Don't Bit know that one shot. at all. 74th minute, Sol Brin had to be alert again. He made a save from Thomas, whose first shot was low, straight at that keeper. So they're trying to get back into this game. That's yeah. the thing about Cheltenham, that they were trying to fight for the player, for the for their teammates and for their manager. So maybe they will be okay, yeah. with, but they've not got much longer to, to get that. Now, 76 minutes now, George Moncur was replaced by Max Sanders and Zach Obiero, who had done very well throughout this game. I know we've not really mentioned him much, but he did very well in this game. He was replaced by Rob Hunt. Yeah, I think he, you could tell how well done. They got a massive stand ovation yeah. from the crowd as he was walking off. Jack Simpson made a great block to deny Harrop's goal-bound effort in the 78th minute. That was a fantastic block. I think that was going into the hundred percent. Yeah, read that perfectly well. Take a bow though, Ruel Sotirio, as his superb curling effort gave us our third goal of the match after Dan Aggie's closing down of the defence saw the ball bobble out to Ruel, who from quite a fair way out, must be a good 25-30 yards, he hit the ball first time which flew into the net to make a hat-trick of superb goals for the afternoon. And again, like, like I just said, what a goal, what a curler. That's what makes Ruel so frustrating, right? Because Correct. he's missed... Far, Sitters. far more easier chances than that, and he just looked up and just buried that into the corner. That was a beautiful finish. Should the keeper do better there, then, given it's further out and he's got longer to uh, anticipate? You, arguably, you could say his positioning isn't amazing if you're being critical of the keeper because yeah. he's not. No one thinks Will's going to take the shot because he just doesn't. He just absolutely smacks it. Doesn't even look up for it. 
Uh, great finish. You have to ask Simon Rice about that one or goalkeeping coach. Yeah. The keeper should be doing better. But that really did seal <coughs> the point. And in seven minutes of additional time, went up on the board. And Cheltenham pulled a goal back in the 97th minute after Solbury seemed to drop. Oh, this is difficult. I saw it back on the telly and I still can't make out if it, if he's, if it hits the bar and his hand the and he yeah. can't work out where he is or not. I need to see it back. I've not really done my homework enough on this one. Anyway, should have been Brennan Vassar again. It looked like that anyway. Can't work out if he's dropped it. Obviously, the bar behind him. Ball comes out to Nuttall who just taps it in to make it well, free. Brendan Cooper was there and probably could have done or should have done a bit better there as well. Um, I mean, yeah, the blame probably does sit with, with Sol Brin, but you're right, it does hit the bar, I think, and I think he does go up to catch it before it hits the bar, which is, I think, the mistake. Mm. That's that's where the mistake lies. But then him and Brandon Cooper are still there. They can still get the ball away, but their man... Brandon Cooper's goal side, but their man still gets the final touch that puts it in the back of the net. I mean, thank God that didn't actually make that much of a difference. It's just a shame we didn't keep a clean sheet. Um, so nothing else really to report on this the referee blew the full time whistle as the O's took the points beating Cheltenham 3-1 at Brisbane Road to the sounds of rocking all over the world it certainly did Richie Wellens' post-match interview is up on the club's YouTube channel uh, you can find it there thanks today for sending it all over we would normally play it but given that this has been an hour 20 podcast already we aren't going to play it but again Richie speaks about uh, the match and about a few other things, which is well worth a listen. All right, that win sees us stay in 10th place now in League One. We played 42, only four matches left now, Bedford Lejande. We won at 17, drawn 10, lost 15 with a goal difference. We were so close to a plus one goal difference. Yeah. Goal difference of zero, but 61 points, which is a very welcome return. We are still mathematically in with a chance of a playoff place. I don't think we're going to get that. However, to still be in mathematically with four games left of a playoff place. Crazy, isn't it? is unbelievable so a massive well done to everyone uh, involved at the club for that because I think that is something that you have to applaud the club on alright Mr Levy for the final time in this episode give us your views on that match short and sweet for me I thought we played some nice stuff at times but I didn't think it was really a 3-1 game to be honest I mean it's three worlders that have got us the, the, the points today I thought Town had a couple of good chances in the second half their players are still looking to fight uh, for survival but otherwise I, di- I didn't really think they offered us too much I thought Obiero and Simpson uh, did very well today. Um, and, you know, obviously Simpson came on um, and and did well uh, when needed. He got he got uh, there was one move where um, he he got the ball nicked away from him, but he did well enough to recover it. So that's that's always good. Big question for me: Ethan Galbraith is so good. Can we keep him next season? Wherever he's been played, he stand out. Whether he's playing further forward. All right or whether he's playing at right back, whatever he's doing, whether he's the last man covering from a set-piece routine, from a corner, he's the one, he's got pace on him, he reads the game well, he's got good feet, he runs with the ball, there's literally nothing the kid can't do. The question for me is, in this in, in the summer, is a Peterborough United, for example, the right club for him, you know, as a move, it w- would come in, bearing in mind that they might sell Hector on, Right and get five million quid. Would they give us a million quid for him, for example? Just, just again. There's no ulterior motive for this. I don't know anything. But <laughs> just, I'm, no, honestly, pe- people might think that, that he knows something, but he doesn't. I just he's so stand out. Like to to our comment from from the Lincoln game, he's just so stand out that he's championship ready. It just it just blows my mind that we've got this guy at our club. He really does. I'm delighted to get the win after two losses. We're tenth at this stage of the season, so it's all good with me. And I also noticed that there were four four of the promoted teams, sorry, three of the promoted teams from last season are around oh, each yeah. other at this point of the season. Yeah, Stevenage above us, then us, and then Northampton. Yeah, Obviously, Carlisle are the outer liers at, their, at the bottom of the table. So, you know, we, we, we've done good, the ones that come up last season. We certainly have, yeah. I think, for me, again, short and sweet for me, I was happy to be at this game, actually. It's the first game I've been at in this podcast that we're talking about. I thought it was, it was closer than 3-1, but I think, I, quite, I think we just had that little bit more quality than what they did. But I think once we were two up, it was fairly straightforward, really. Great goals. I thought all the goals were taken really well. I think Ethan Galbraith, like we said, I thought he goes from strength to strength, whether you're playing the right back or you're playing in central midfield. We've not seen a poor performance from him yet. I think the second half of the season he's really taken off. He's definitely improved. I remember Northampton away, he made the mistake that led to the equaliser. And there were a few question marks around him then. I think he's had a very, very good 2024 so far. 
and has really come on leaps and bounds. I think Zek, I was quite surprised by Zek Cabrera. I thought he was more of an attacking player. My understanding was he was a winger attacking Agreed. player. I was quite surprised to see him as one of the two kind of defensive liars. So I was quite impressed with him and he's very young. Agreed. And he's not that big. He's not Physically he's not very big. No. He doesn't look strong. He's obviously stronger than what he looks because he, he put an absolute shift yesterday. So very, very pleasantly surprised by Obiero and maybe we'll see more of him in the last couple of games. I thought Simpson done well. And again, Simpson is a lot more physical than what I thought. I've only seen Simpson big boy. sitting down and crying basically in his interviews or being very emotive emotional with him which is what which is what he's been when you see him stand up you think actually he, he's a he's a unit and he's not afraid to take a smack I like defenders who aren't afraid to take a smack like when he made that block he literally like put his body like in the way of yeah. it. I like defenders like that yeah. we've seen defenders on who don't necessarily do that all the time <clears throat> so he looks like he could be uh, could be a business alright so Brin, let's talk about him he's on loan right we're not signing Sol Brin. We know we're not signing Sol Brin. However, might we sign might we sign Sol Brin again on loan next season? Been a few tweets maybe suggesting that that could happen. Obviously, we've had El Miz two years in a row. Brin is still very young, nowhere near Middlesbrough's first choice. He's not going to go on loan to another Championship club because he's I don't think he's at that level, which means he goes back to a League One club probably next season. Could Sol Brin come back to us? Possibly. However, I take on board, and there's a lot of tweets saying, why not start House the next couple of games? If we're safe, and House is our player, and to be fair, by the time Bryn came back from his injury, House has actually improved quite a lot, mm -hmm. put in a few decent performances, so maybe is House worthy of a start? Basically, Dave Victor asked the same question to uh, Richie, and again, Richie didn't like the question, and sh shot it down again, basically, in his post-match. It's worth listening to that interview, if no one's listened to it. Um, but I, I think I mentioned it earlier in the episode Richie said in his post-match that he said to the team next season starts now before the Charlton Town game and I think that's spot on let's win the rest of these games now take the momentum into next season and start that which is why I want to see players like Piggott try and get a goal to kind of put this horrible season for him behind him which is why I'd rather he start than Edwards and if you're going to bring Adji on bring Adji on for half hour or whatever and give him, give him that time mm -hmm. but, uh, but I, I, I must say, I did love that with what Richie says. And I mm -hmm. think Richie's probably a bit agitated that he knows this season that he's not going to be a winner. He, like, that guy is a winner. That's his mentality. He wants to win all the time. And I think the fact that he's not going to make the playoffs, even though nobody expected him to make the playoffs, I think is hurting him quite a lot. And that's his motivation. And I think that's a great place. Mm. A great place to be at. So, yeah, great day. I love Retro Day. Great goals. Yeah, I agree. Need more Retro Days, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm very surprised they didn't put out a shirt to try and sell for Retro Day again. Obviously, they'd done a March Pole one. Everyone bought one. The day that came out, literally every guy like in, around us was wearing, was wearing it. Great. I'm yep. amazed they didn't try and get another one out there for Retro yeah. Day. Heat. Heat, Comet Roofing, Comet Independent roofing. Transport, yeah, the Braces, absolutely. the Hummel, Not the a couple braces. of sport kits. They could make a mint. I'm, yeah, I'm quite surprised. I'm quite surprised. I'm surprised also they didn't get that Hearts Friendly kit out. You know, the one they've spoken about a couple of times. Again, that's going to have a retro feel to it with the big Chevron that you'd imagine. I'm surprised they didn't try and make more money out of that because they probably would have made a mint doing that. Yeah, but I guess okay. we'll see. Exciting times for the club. All right, those were our views for the last time in this episode. We're going to bring you your views, Orient Meat Pie, to the comfortable afternoon overall. I'm glad Davies missed this. Well, Davies is an Orient fan, isn't he? So he knows that he ain't going to score against Orient. He loves the O's. Missed the sitter, or it may have been closer. Sloppy at the end. Nice way to bounce back, though. You lovely O's. I thought he was quite poor, Curtis Davis, actually. At thought times, right. I thought he got shown up quite badly. Um, Alan Reeves, too. Good result, considering we all thought it would have an end-of-season feel to it. Seen enough of Simpson and Obiero to feel that two problems for next season are solved. Questions about Bryn in the last two games, though. Nearly cost us again today. Do we bear to three great goals from outside the 18-yard area? But how many mistakes can Bryn be allowed before Howes gets another chance? Obiero looks like, like a prospect. Edwards... Looks National League. Stroud Greeno said, strange one really, as we've played quite a bit better than that in other games, but lost. Three quality strikes make the difference. Um, might as well start Howes for the rest of the season, as I don't think he sh we should even be contemplating re-signing Bryn. Yeah, I mean, we're going to come to it, but I think I think the big two positions for Orient now next season are number one and number four. I really think those, I think if you get those now, I think we could have yeah. a real good chance if you get a real strong number one in and a real good number four, whether that's El Miz or someone of a higher calibre, I think we've got a real, real, real strong unit 
Yeah, I think I think those are the tight positions for me. I would, uh, you know, Lawrence Vigrou's move hasn't worked out at, at Burnley. I'd love to think in some sort of fantasy that he's like, I wish I'd come back to Orient Not and sign a two-year loan deal with us. See out his contract with Burnley. Sign a two. This is all fantasy, obviously. <laughs> fantasy football. Chance. League One fantasy football is that so um, that. Yeah, obviously Sol goes back to, to Middlesbrough and Burnley like, yeah, we don't really need you, Lulz. Um, Orient want you. Do you want to go back and just cover whatever of his wages and be done with it and, and we get him for two years and then sign him? I've got a feeling he'll be Burnley number two next season. Do you reckon? Yeah. They're going to get really getting after, and they're going to have to sell a lot of players to make up their shortfall, I think. And he's signed a free deal there, so he's still got two years at the club. Yeah. That They're not going to they're not going to take that much of a hit on him I don't think I think I think he ends up getting closer to their um, starting position mm, ok well mate I would, there's nothing more I would love than Vigory to come back I think never in a month for Sundays but more, more unpredictable things have happened absolutely it's football absolutely you never know Phil VZ1 so the new tactic of taking some shots at goal is a winner three superb strikes that's on our way great performance from Robbie Aero was a huge positive to take because surely he must be a big contender for a midfield place next season Felt for Sol, you know, as a clean sheet would have been the perfect tonic. Uh, Daniel underscore D44 said, it's a bit like many of the games from last season. Played quite well, didn't create loads, but scored some well dears. Fantastic debut from Obiero. Great performance from Brown, Galbraith, O'Neill and Monker. Also thought Simpson looked very good when he came on. Yeah, good little round up there. Rich Den M. So I didn't have to work too hard, but a decent result. Zek was calm, confident and a really good performance. Edwards deserves credit for holding the ball up. For the first goal, yeah, he done well. Hundred percent took the ball down really well. Nice well. touch. Theo Archie Ballin said, "Everyone suddenly turning on Bryn when he's won us and kept us in so many games this season. Such short memories, honestly. Once he irons out his mistakes, he'll be world class." That's also a good balancing point. Uh, it's a very good balancing point. I think you know he's had two tough games there, but bear in mind he's played most of the forty-two league games this season and made some good saves and kept an awful lot right. of clean sheets. There's nothing to be sniffed at. Derby five oh seven. It's a really strange game. Could have been 3 0 down after half hour, but two well taken goals, and we're going half time in cruise control. Second half was almost a carbon copy. Galbraith is the future. And well done to Simpson, who looked a very good player. Uh, D. Rolf Doyle said, enjoyed some of those performances, Zach, Ollie, and Ethan especially. I know everyone wants housing, but I don't see the point because it's not like he'll be our number one next season. And maybe even Richie wants Bryn for another year. Don't forget, he is only 22. Good point. Patrick G, 3 to 1, Panama tweet. This one said, I was impressed with Jack Simpson's cameo. From the North Stand, you can see and hear that he's a real leader and talker on the pitch. Wow. Good. Obviously, we didn't get to know that. Because Danny Averone, that's yeah. a really good point from Patrick. Composed on the ball and he's huge, which for some reason yeah. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, he doesn't look. <laughs> obviously, we only see him sitting down in the interview. Chest he's, up. He's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Potentially a very good player for next season. Up the O's. Final word goes to Painting Orient. Said it's been a month, many a month since Cheltenham let in so many goals in League One. Then there seemed some extra bite with some increased competition for starting bursts and some cracking goals resulted from several players who can continue to kick on and develop in next, into next season. All right, some outstanding tweets over the last three matches we've had. If you agree or disagree with any of the tweets we've read out or anything we've mentioned or talked about, you can let us know what you think by giving us a tweet at Orient Outlook. If you're not on Twitter, you can give us an email at Orient Outlook. At outlook.com you can also find us on Instagram mm-hmm. uh, orient underscore outlook underscore podcast so you can find us on Facebook if you'd like to at orient outlook podcast and give our page a follow so lots of ways to engage with us and keep up your communication with your South Stand chums indeed you can sort I up prediction league update now Gianluca Bow 3772 correctly predicted 3 1, so you got three points. So well done to you. Paul Gregory, Paul R. Gregory, sorry, Ben Whitlock 13, Wheeler underscore 6, all correctly predicted the score and one score, so you guys get four points, but extra special props. Go to Neil Langhorn, Theo the Wyvern, JME Ray 72, Steve Chaplin 4, Derby 507, LOFC Trees, and lovely to see you yesterday. Yes. Uh, C. Vlatas, Glenn Gatti, Ian Hutchinson 08. Huge props to all of you. 3-1 predicted score and two of the scorers. So you all get a whopping five points, which now means the top of the prediction league is as follows. Yeah, so Dave Bruce wow. still leading the way on 28 points. Dave Bruce 4, 7, 9, 7, 6, 9, 1, 1. Three points behind him on 25 points. is Rio underscore Orient. And Steve Chaplin 4 is now with a real chance of winning it, following his five-point haul yesterday. 24 points, so just outside of them. Eastside Orient, Paul R. Gregory, 
and Theo the Wyvern on 23 points down William H and LOFC Teresa so four games left to predict on it's going to be very tight at the top of the yeah. prediction league it I think really it is. might go to the last game it, I think it of the season alright Sunday the 7th of April happy birthday to O's Chiefs Scouts Lee Foster and to Par I think it was Pars on Friday or Saturday it wasn't today it was it was either yesterday or on sorry Friday. it was yesterday sorry I put it in the wrong day yeah, alright so, all right. happy birthday Par absolutely lots and lots of birthdays <laughs> at the club for the past three weeks hope you had a great day Pa and Steve indeed so the ladies team were in action today and our famous ladies reconfirmed their unpredictability as they took on fourth bottom Camden Town this time it was a quarter final of the League Cup so a cup final was just two wins away unfortunately not anymore yeah alright let's go Jordan Feldman ran through the Camden defence got on the end of a great pass from Grace Connell Brazand after a tussle with a marker, squeezed the ball into the net to give the O's a half-time lead. But two goals around the hour mark from Camden turned the game upside down and it was left for the super subs of Leanne Bates and Chloe Cabo to come on the field, having sat on the bench for 70-odd minutes to team up again. And that partnership saw Leanne finish sweetly after a great dribbling run through the from Chloe had set up her chance. At 2 all though, the game went straight to penalties where every attempt was successful until the 11th penalty as Camden keeper pulled off a good save and with that we exited the cup 6-5 uh, unlucky super unlucky uh, ladies, ladies. Yeah, not to worry decent performance right so next Sunday the 14th of April the top side and current favourites Comets WFC travel to Buckhurst Hill to confirm their standing as the number one side in the Premier League they come into play the O's women and goodness knows what will happen but you'll find out about it in next week's podcast. Amazing write-ups. Thank you to LOFCwomen.com uh, who have given us so much yeah. amazing content on the women's uh, results. Indeed. So one hour, 36, 36 minutes. Bit of a bumper this one, has this. been a bit of a bumper. Let's wrap this up and we'll do a fantasy, fantasy football, football update. All right, How are we'll you getting on? Hopefully the table Who's has top? updated. All right, so the table hasn't updated since yesterday. So this is going from yesterday's results. So this could well change. But at the time of recording... Jamie Wellham is top of the Orient Outlook Podcast Fantasy League on 1,991 points. He is 18 points ahead of Josh Abrahams in second place, who is also nine points ahead of Adam Preston. So quite close at the yeah. top. I have shifted down to 229th place okay. in the league, but there's three games today where the points have all got to be added on. So keep your eyes on fantasypremier.com. There's still quite a few Premier League games to play, even though there's only four EFL games left to play I think there's still eight Premier League games left to play and there's lots of places for you to move up or down on space to everyone who's playing in our Premier League and we hope you're all having great fun it's the most annoying game though mate I can't yeah. tell you although I'm top of my family uh, thing which is the only league I care about so as long as I win that I don't care I've got to beat my 11 year old nephew and my 15 year old nephew which it looks like it's going to happen so come on, come on. That's All why right. I don't do it because I haven't got the <laughs> time or the space in my brain to deal with that. So positives and negatives. We've got quite a few positives this week, so we'll take a couple each and then uh, one negative each. So we obviously beat Cheltenham three uh, one. Big positive there, and obviously the return of Dan Aggie to the to the first team squad as well. It's good to see. Love to see. All right. The last two positives: Jack Simpson making his debut so now. He can play for the O's. He can start for the O's. His suspension is over. And from yesterday, we like the look of what we have seen from mm. him, and also. I think this happened now two weeks ago, but we've got to mention it. It's not every day your youth team goes to a Premier League team and beats them 5 0. So well done to the youth team. Yeah. Amazing result of that to beat Lewin Town 5 0. All right, those positives? Yeah. Oh, Zach Abiero's um, performance yesterday could also be worthy yeah, of, a, of a huge positive. Well, two negatives the losses to Lincoln and Peter. I think Peter, I think both of those games really were games we probably ought to have taken something from. Yeah, and, and guess what hurts? Two teams are likely to. Probably both be in the playoffs. So Lincoln slipped out yesterday. They did. Having drawn at Reading and Oxford can beat 4 0. Now Burton yeah. are in the relegation places yeah. in the division and as well. So have jumped out. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be interesting. Last negative Idris's injury. So, like we said, he's out for the season. season Whether or not we'll see him again in Norwich shirt, who knows? We'll obviously speak about Idris in our end of season podcast because I think that'll be well um, worth talking about. All right, here of the fortnight or here of the three weeks gone. I mean, we could have given it to multiple players. I mean, just based on yesterday, you could have given it to Oli O'Neill. You could have given it to Zek Oviero. You could have given Ruel. it to Jack Simpson. You could have given it to Ruel for his goal. Lots of contenders. But we think over the last three weeks, considering sure, this yeah. guy, Paul has mentioned him already, and probably given Peterborough United fans ideas about signing him, potentially, as he mentioned Peterborough. He's been full of praise for him. So, the hero of the three weeks is... Ethan Galbraith. 
very richly deserved, well done, and it's great to be able to name him as our hero this week. So next week's fixtures, a bit of a busy one actually, because we've got two fixtures. We've got the rearranged game, first up with Exeter City, that's happening this Tuesday the 9th of April. They are currently 12th place in League One, they beat Stevenage 1-0 at home yesterday, good. Um, they've won their last, uh, four of their last five, having drawn one, so they are on some good form uh, as well. I think it's 1-2, drawn one. One two, so they are in good good form there. Bit scary that. Yeah, I mean, my uh, I think I will say in this one, my daughter is a flag bearer in this one as well. So if you see her walking around waving a flag, she'll be like the tallest girl there. Doesn't look anything like me, so no one will probably recognise her. But if you do, give her an oil oi Jess. She will love that. <laughs> <laughs> you better warn her that you've told that. I will do. I mean, I mean that isn't anything to do with the podcast. That's down to the great work the Orient uh, do in the community and yeah. help the, her school out. Thomas Willing Girl, I'll shout out doing their Junior Duke Awards. So well played to everyone at the club and at the school also um, for doing that. Then, it's just nicely, nice yeah, coincidence. Abs- absolutely. Then on Saturday the 13th of April, one of the biggest away days of the season as we travel to Derby County who are currently second in League One. They are just a point ahead of Bolton Wanderers. So this is a big Huge, game. Yeah, they need to big win Big game uh, for them as we get into the final <laughs> crux of the season now. They've won three, drawn one and lost one of their last five so they're in good form We're taking a, a decent following I think we sold over 1200 1, tickets yeah. I think and they'll be more bound to rock up obviously massive ground massive mm. club massive away end but again they've played 42 Bolton have played 42 one point between those two teams they need to they need the points and obviously a lot of players similar like goal Dwight Gow well. they've got some big big players there yeah. that's kind of ground we could go to who knows what your Orient could do if you Absolutely. go and have a very safe journey tweet us on your journey tweet us during the match or wow. tweet us on your way point, home so point and two goals in it yeah correct it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down to the wire that one it's been a bumper episode thanks for sticking with us but before we leave you don't forget to get in touch with John and the fantastic team at Carol Langley Florist give them a call on 0208 529 4130 or get in contact with them via social media you can find them on Twitter at Carol Langley E4 or Essex Biz where you can find John you can also find the team on Instagram at Carol Langley Florist or you can find the guys on Facebook at Carol Langley Florist you can indeed so that is it finally that is it thank you very much for joining us for episode 352 it's been a very busy Easter down in E10 two defeats Lincoln and Peterborough over that period meant our playoff dreams were ended but Richie Wellens Red and White Army got back to winning ways with a 3-1 win against Cheltenham Towns we look to finish the season strongly keep up the momentum into the new season and we now have a chance to do this with two games this week that you can look forward to hearing about in next week's episode from your South Stand chums although not me because I am out next Sunday night so Steve will be joined by a special guest next week here at Orient Outlook Podcast Towers. Very true. If you're listening on iTunes, please subscribe. You can give the podcast a five-star rating to do that on iTunes. If you're listening on Spotify, don't forget you can rate the show if you're listening on Spotify. You can also leave a comment on each episode. So if you're listening via Spotify or via iTunes, please do that. And don't forget to do, uh, if you have the chance, to follow us on any of your chosen podcast providers. That way... You'll get all the episodes as soon as they are available. You can find the podcast anywhere that you find anything. Smart speakers, the Fan Hub app, YouTube, anywhere. Listening to the podcast has never been easier. If you have an older relative, a loved one, an Orient chum, a new fan, anyone on the train who's listening to the podcast, anyone anywhere, don't forget to grab their phones, download it for them, and pass the pod. Indeed, absolutely. We're going to be back next week with episode 353 um, with all the information, all the news and views that you could possibly ever need to hear about. We look forward to hearing from you in the meantime. So keep calm, stay safe, have a great week and listen to the Orient Outlook podcast. Up the O's.